Hey! Did you try to kill me? Nigga, if I shot you, I wouldn't have missed. <laughs> Stop staring in my eye. <laughs> staring at me, nigga. Damn, nigga. What you smoking? My own shit. If you want to live, you might want to cut me in on whatever you and your bitch got going on over there. Hey, hey listen, uh, why don't you give me a call if, uh, if you ever need anything? I will. I'm looking to buy a dude out. Your mom seems to have the funds to do that. How much you need? I don't know. Find out and get back to me. Tell me your story. Where you want me to start? The FBI found your DNA in a burnt car near Q's body. I didn't kill him. Good. But now we have to prove it. And what if we can't? Then you'll be going away for the rest of your life. What up with it, YouTube? What's good with everybody? What's up with y'all? It's your boy DC, and in today's video, I'm about to be recapping the Shy Season 6, Episode 10, and let y'all know how I felt about the episode overall. If you a fan of the Shy like me, and you like the videos that I upload and create, hit that like button to help this video get recommended across the algorithm. Hit that post bell notification button to get notified every time I upload a video, and also... Leave your thoughts and theories down below in the comment box so y'all let me know y'all thoughts about this episode overall as well as this video. Overall, this episode was good. I give this episode a solid 7, 7.5. This was another build-up episode if you ask me. It felt like they was developing on the storylines and developing on new characters and the stuff that's about to occur in these next upcoming episodes of The Shy. So it is what it is. It still was a good episode. I cannot wait to see what's next for these next upcoming episodes of The Shy because it's looking like shit is about to hit the fan, especially for your boy Trey. It's looking like Trey about to get locked the fuck up in episode 11. I haven't seen the episode 11 trailer yet, but it's looking like he about to get locked up in episode 11. Because in this episode, it was revealed to us that the FBI found fingerprints on the vehicle that Duda and Trey was riding in when they dumped Q body in the lake. In this episode, we saw the FBI pull that vehicle out of the water, and while they was dusted for fingerprints, they ended up coming across his Victor DNA. And with Victor DNA being found in this vehicle, this is about to lead to him possibly being arrested in episode 11. Or it could occur in episode 12 or 13, who knows, but I feel like he's going to go to jail in episode 11 because of this. His lawyer, Lonzo, which is a new character that we got introduced to in this episode, who was played by Leon. And his lawyer told him, he like, bro, if we can't prove that you didn't commit this murder, you're going to jail for the rest of your life. Because Rita asked him, he like, nigga, what happens if we can't prove that I didn't kill him? Because I ain't kill this nigga. He like, shit. It's looking like you're going to jail for the rest of your life if we can't prove that, bro. And as of now, it's looking like that's about to happen. It's looking like your boy Victor about to be the one to take the fall for all of this at the end of the day when it's all said and done. I don't know how he gonna get out this situation. The only way I could see him getting out this situation is if he snitched on Duda. Because at the beginning of the episode, Victor was having a meeting with city council about mental health and the stuff that he wanted to do with mental health in the city of Chicago. And when he was leaving that meeting, we saw somebody kidnap him. We couldn't tell who this was at first, but already knew firsthand this was your boy Duda. Duda been terrorizing the streets of Chicago for about six seasons now. I knew Duda had something to do with Victor being kidnapped. And it was confirmed later on in the episode when Duda met up with Victor. Because Duda kidnapped Victor in this episode to see if Victor was the one that tried to take him out and Victor told that nigga straight up bro he like nigga if I tried to take you out I wouldn't miss like if I wanted to smoke you bro you wouldn't be dead trust me on that and Duda realized that he like yeah you're right about that but I still need you to keep your mouth shut about that Q situation bro and then this nigga Victor had the nerve to headbutt this nigga Duda while he was tied up to a chair. Like Duda wasn't going to do something about that. That nigga really thought he had the upper hand on Duda. That nigga Duda punched the shit out of Victor in his eye. I'm not going to front. He had that nigga Victor looking like Red from Friday when Debo punched him in his shit, bro. That nigga Duda had Victor eyes swollen throughout the whole entire episode, bro. That nigga Duda really punched him in his shit, bro. And I'm expecting Duda to black the other eye. If that nigga Treg snitched on his ass about him being involved in Q's murder. Now, in this episode, we saw Alicia and Rashad make a connection with each other while Rashad and Darnell was at Alicia's house fixing her plumbing for her. She was having some plumbing issues and your boy Darnell and Rashad was over there fixing her plumbing for her. And while Darnell was outside grabbing the rest of the tools that he needed to fix Alicia's sink, Alicia and Rashad was having a conversation with each other about Rashad being the felon and him going to jail. Alicia brought up how her brother Q was in jail before, but now he's dead. They also was having a conversation about Rashad and where he could hide his money at because Rashad was letting it be known to Alicia that he keep his money in the shoebox under his mattress, which prompted Alicia to tell Rashad that maybe he should give his money to somebody that he could trust to watch it for him because your boy Rashad doesn't believe in putting his money in bank accounts. And Alicia told Rashad that maybe Rashad should give his money to her so she could watch it for him. Like, nigga, what? I don't even know you like that, lady. And that's what Rashad told her. He like, bro, I barely know you like... Why would I give you my money to watch it for me? I don't even know you. And when he said this, Alicia like, shit, well, we can get to know each other. Like, you know what I'm saying? 
And Rashad was like, all right, bet. They ended up swapping digits with each other. Your boy Rashad tried to make it seem like he could come through and fix some locks for Alicia Door because he heard that the neighborhood has high break-in or whatever. But that was his way of flirting, trying to get some from Alicia and shit. It's looking like that might happen because later on in the episode, your boy Rashad showed up to Alicia's house with his goddamn tools in the middle of the night. Like he was about to come over there to fix some shit. Like, nigga, we all know what your ass doing here late at night, bro. You trying to get some cutty. But with him making the connection with Alicia, I do believe him and Alicia is about to grow closer with each other in these next upcoming episodes of the shot and shit look here bro i wouldn't be surprised if he move in it's looking like your boy rashad might move in with alicia and it's looking like these two might be in a serious relationship with each other that's just my opinion we know from a scene that we seen in the season six part two trailer that your boy rashad is going to be setting up a conversation with Emmett and alicia and with rashad helping Emmett set up this conversation between him and alicia i do believe rashad and alicia is going to grow closer with each other in this second half of season six and i would not be surprised if he starts working for alicia and her organization and start doing a lot of her dirty work for her and while I mentioned the Emmett and Alicia having a conversation with each other, in this episode, we also saw your girl Alicia make a connection with Emmett as well. Because in this episode, when Emmett was having a conversation with Rob and Tiffany at Rob's house, well, at one of Alicia's houses that Rob and Tiffany were staying at until further notice, but while they was there having a conversation with each other, your boy Emmett told Rob and Tiffany that he was going to buy his way out of this stuff that he got going on with Duda. And with Rob mom being loaded with money, Emmett feels like Rob Mon can make an investment for Emmett so that Emmett could pay this money back that he owed Duda so Emmett could get from under Duda's thumb. And Rob was telling Emmett, like, look, bro, my mama is stingy. And as these two was having a conversation with each other about this, Rob Mom Alicia walk in asking Emmett how much money he need. She heard everything these niggas were saying and Emmett was just sitting there like, well, 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 I got, I got to figure it out. I, I don't know. And she like, well, let me know. And you know what I'm saying? Get back to me so we can figure this out. And it's looking like your boy Emmett is about to get that money from Alicia Mom. Which is going to come with a favor. I do believe this is going to come with a favor. And Rob was telling him too, like, look, bro, she going to make you work for that money. Don't think this shit all easy and fun and games. Like, my mama don't play. And I really cannot wait to see the dark side of Alicia. Because they've been teasing how Alicia is worse than Duda. They've been teasing how she make Duda look weak. Like, I really cannot wait to see the dark side of Alicia character in these future episodes of The Shot. Because I do believe at some point before this season is over with, Alicia is going to turn up. We're going to see a side to her that we ain't never seen before. And what we do everybody better stay the hell out her way now in this episode we got introduced to another new character by the name of professor gardner and professor gardner is lanae's professor for a literature class that she's taking in college we saw lanae in college in this episode it's looking like she's still going to continue on pursuing her education outside of high school so i'm glad to see that and we also saw lanae help bakari and professor gardner make a connection with each other in this episode because in this episode lanae invited bakari to come to the college campus in this episode so that he could listen to professor gardner teach about the stuff that he be teaching to lanae and while bakari was there he ended up taking a liking into professor gardner and when bakari was having a conversation with professor gardner after lene introduced them two to each other bakari ended up quoting one of professor gardner's quotes from a book that professor gardner wrote and professor gardner like this he realized that your boy bakari is a fan of his work but he told bakari like look bro i can't break university regulations like you don't even go here i can't have you in my classroom like this but i do tutor after school like you know what i'm saying if you want to come to these tutor sessions i got you bro and Bakari like, hell yeah, bro, I'll be there at 5 o'clock. You ain't got nothing to worry about. But shit, when 5 o'clock came, your boy Bakari was nowhere to be found. Don't get me wrong, he showed up, but he ain't show up on time. And this pissed Professor Gardner off. He like, bro, I ain't trying to hear anything you got to say. Like, you wasted your opportunity with me. And Bakari was telling him, like, bro, I need this opportunity. Like, you the only one that can save my life, bro. If you don't help me out, I'm going to die. And when Professor Gardner heard this, he realized that your boy Bakari wasn't bullshitting around with him and he really need his help so that he could survive and make it out the streets of Chicago. So Professor Gardner gave Bakari a journal in this episode and he told him he want him to write in this journal every single day and write out the stuff that he wants to say and don't share this stuff with nobody. He like, bro, just write out your thoughts, like write out all the stuff that you would want to say and don't show this to nobody. And he also told Bakari that he wanted to hear his story and where it all started from the beginning. But we didn't hear Bakari tell Professor Gardner his story, but I do believe in these next upcoming episodes of the shot we will learn more about bakari's story and the stuff that he had to go through in the past now coming back to your boy rob in this episode we saw your boy rob get confronted by nook while he was outside and i don't understand why this nigga rob is outside in the first place after he got shot like that was dumb as hell for him to do i don't understand this at all but hey, it is what it is but your boy luck caught this nigga rob lacking and while he had a gun pointed to the back of rob's head he ended up noticing that rob was smoking that good weed that him and rob was smoking at emma's house when we were partying in episode three and he told rob straight up like look bro i'll let you live i won't take your life but you and your girl gotta cut me in on the weed business that you got going on like bro this shit is good this is some good weed and shit 
And in exchange for your life, you're going to pay me what you need to pay me so you can stay alive. And with Rob having a gun to his head, he really ain't had no choice. And he told Tiffany this in this episode. He like, bro, Nuck wants in on the weed business. We got to pay him a cut. If I don't do this, bro, he going to take me out. Like, I had no choice. I had to agree to this because I had a gun to the back of my head. And really, Rob didn't have to agree to nothing because if he would have stayed his ass in the goddamn house and not been outside in the first place, none of this shit would have happened. So, Rob, that's on you. With all due respect, bro, that's your fault. You should never had your ass outside in the first place. You're supposed to be at home recovering from the gunshot wound that you suffered. So not like that, but Rob, you got to take the blame for this one, bro. You was outside when you wasn't supposed to be outside. This is just my opinion, but it is what it is. It's looking like your boy Nuck is about to be extorting Rob and Tiffany for their money and their weed business, and I cannot wait to see how this is about to transpire in future episodes as well. Now, in this episode, we saw Jake and Gemma having issues with each other once again. Your girl Gemma was upset at the fact that Jake had Papa girlfriend Kenya, or friend, whatever you want to call it, but Kenya was helping Jake out in this episode because Jake needed models to help promote his clothing brand, and Kenya told Jake she would help out because she needed the money because her father not giving her none, and I'm not going front. This scene right here had me scratching my head. I'm not going to lie. It was low-key looking like Jake and Kenya was low-key feeling each other in this scene right here. And Jake, do not smash Papa Girlfriend or Friend, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Don't touch Kenya, bro. We don't need to see this storyline again with you taking one of your friend's girlfriend. Like, we didn't saw this shit happen with Kevin in season four. We don't need to see this shit happen in season six. We don't need to see this Jake leave Kenya the hell alone. Do not touch Kenya. Don't even look at Kenya, bro. I don't even know why you would hire Kenya as a model in the first place. Like, in my opinion, I would have hired somebody else out of respect for my friend. I wouldn't have bought his girlfriend or friend, whatever you want to call it, to model my clothes for me. Like, I wouldn't have did that shit at all. That's just my opinion. I hope Kenya and Jake do not hook up with each other because I do not want to see that shit, bro. I don't want to see your boy Jake. Still one of his friend's girlfriends again. I don't want to see that shit happen at all. But it's looking like he might not have a girlfriend no more because him and Jimma was going through it this episode. And honestly, bro, I feel like Jimma and Jake is about to break up in these next upcoming episodes. Like, it just really seemed like these two is growing apart from each other, if you ask me. They always arguing about the stupidest shit ever. They rarely hang out with each other. Like, it really just seemed like these two are just growing apart from each other. And I'm expecting these two to eventually break up at some point before this second half of season six is over with but other than that man drop your theories and comments down below in the comment box y'all let me know how y'all felt about this video as well as this episode overall i ain't really got too much else to say about this episode i feel like this episode was a great build-up episode i give it a solid 7 7.5 I'm expecting episode 11 to be good. I'm definitely expecting it to be better than episode 9 and 10. If you're a fan of the shy like me and you like the videos that I upload and create, hit that like button to help this video get recommended across the algorithm. Hit that post bell notification button to get notified every time I upload a video. And also leave your comments and theories in the comment box and y'all let me know y'all predictions for these next upcoming episodes of the shot. Until then, y'all, I'm out. I'll see you guys next time. Y'all take care. Y'all be safe and God bless.